Hey everybody, it's Lyra from Lyra Gaming, and in today's Baldur's Gate 3 guide, we're going to be looking at the Divination School subclass for the Wizard. And if you like to see what the world is really like and even impact it, this may be the subclass for you. In this video, we're going to cover features at level 1 of character creation, including ability recommendations. We're going to give you a full level 2 to 12 breakdown, show you all the spells available as you level, as well as general equipment recommendations and my thoughts on multiclassing as the wizard. You can use timestamps below to jump to areas that most interest you. Remember to drop a like and leave a comment below with your thoughts, feedback, and questions. And now without further ado, let's check out the Divination School Wizard. Alright guys, here we are at level 1. Important to note, the wizard's primary ability is intelligence. Your saving throw proficiencies are going to be in Intelligence and Wisdom. You're going to have a hit dice of 1d6 health. And your proficiencies are limited to daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaffs, and light crossbows. Now at level 1, you do not get to pick your subclass yet, but you are going to get 3 cantrips. A total of 6 spells. And then you're going to get Arcane Recovery as an action, so you replenish spell slots. While out of combat, but do note you cannot restore spell slots above 5th level. You will also get two level 1 spell slots. Now, you get to choose any of these cantrips. I'll go ahead and mouse over them. Feel free to pause the video to read the descriptors. You'll also get access to a variety of spells, and here's everything that you can look forward to. When it comes to ability points, I recommend 8 Strength, 14 Dexterity, 15 Constitution, and do check out the Feet section at level 4 for my recommendation why you should start with 15. 17 Intelligence, I do highly recommend for this class to do the Hag Quest and help her out so that you can get plus 1 to one of your stats. Pump your Intelligence to 18, this way you can easily in low, at low levels get 20 Intelligence. And that will give you room for 10 Wisdom and 10 Charisma. At level 2, you're going to get to pick your subclass, and we're going to pick Divination. You're going to get one more level 1 spell slot. You're going to get Divination Savant, so learning Divination spells from scrolls costs half as much. Become 25 gold pieces per spell level. Do note this is a unique feature to Wizards. You can basically find any scroll and learn that spell from it you just gotta pay a gold amount and it's cheaper to do divination spells here and then you get portent so your dreams grant you glimpses let you influence the future after each long rest you gain two random portent dice during the day you can use your reaction to change the die of any attack roll or saving throw rolled near you to one of your portent dice each portent dice can only be used once, and you lose your unused portent dice at the end of the day. But what's important is these dice may be a low roll or a high roll, for example. And so if you have a low roll, you could, for example, use it against an enemy, and all of a sudden they're likely to miss. Or obviously if it's a high roll, you can save it, or during combat, you name it, and basically substitute that roll. So, if you use it at the right time, it can be quite effective. This is going to get to prepare five spells and pick two more level one spells. At level three, you're going to gain one more level one spell slot. You're going to get two level two spell slots. And you're going to be able to prepare six spells. And then you will get to pick two more spells. But now you can also pick level two spells. Here they are for your review. At 
At level four, you're gonna pick one more level two spell slot. You're gonna add an extra cantrip, two more spells. You get to prepare a total of seven spells, and then you get to choose your feat. Now for wizards, ability improvement to get your. Now for wizards, ability improvement is great to get your intelligence to twenty. And you're so reliant on spellcasting that I also highly recommend Warcaster. What Warcaster will let you do is you're going to gain advantage on saving throws to maintain concentration spells. Anytime you take damage, you're going to have to make a saving throw or lose concentration, so that's really good. I also recommend Resilient here and picking Constitution. This will give you plus one to Constitution, getting that to 16. But now you're going to have proficiency in saving throws for Constitution making it even less likely that you're going to break concentration when you get damaged. You also can't go wrong with Spell Sniper because the number you need to roll to critical hit with Spell is now reduced by 1, so instead of 20, it's now 19. You can also get this effect and it will stack on gear. And then the final one that you can consider is Elemental Adept. So you can pick an element if you want to really focus in on one like Fire or Lightning, for example. And your spells ignore resistance to a damage type of that choice. Also, when you roll damage, you cannot roll a 1, so it'll increase your damage in some situations significantly. At level 5, you're going to get two level 3 spell slots. You're going to be able to prepare 9 spells, and you can pick two more spells. Now you have access to all the level 3 spells. Here is a list for you to review. At level 6, you're going to get another level 3 spell slot. You're going to get Expert Divination. You may gain an additional important die. And when taking a short rest, you receive a prophecy. Complete it to regain a missing important die. At level 7, you're going to get a level 4 spell slot. You can prepare 11 spells. You can pick two more spells, and now you have access to level four spells. Here they are for you to check out. At level eight, you're gonna get another level four spell slot. You can prepare 12 spells. You can pick two more spells. And you're going to pick your second feat. At level 9, you're going to get a level 4 spell slot. One level 5 spell slot. You can prepare 13 spells. And then you can pick two more spells. With access to level 5 spells now. And then at level 10, you're going to get another level 5 spell slot. You're going to get third eye, dark vision. So as an action, you gain the ability to see in the dark out of range 24. Do note, this does not give you devil sight, so you cannot see through magical darkness, unfortunately. And you get third eye, see invisibility. You, you become able to see invisible creatures and possibly reveal them to others. Both of these, when you use them, will last until a long rest. You will also pick another cantrip, prepare up to 14 spells, and pick two more spells. Level 11, you're going to get a level 6 spell slot. You can prepare 15 spells, and now you get access to level 6 spells. Here they are. And then at level 12, you're going to be able to prepare 16 spells. You can pick two more spells. And then you're going to pick your final feat. 
All right, now let's talk about equipment for the wizard. It's a little tricky here because inherently wizards, if you just go full wizard, do not get access to a lot of different equipment. You're probably gonna pick a staff, maybe a basic ranged attack like a light crossbow, cloth as armor, and then support items that are gonna potentially give you access to even more spells, maybe extra spell slots maybe a little extra AC, etc. But really, your equipment diversity will come into play if you decide to multi-class. We'll talk about that. I will say right off the bat, since it's common to get a level of warrior, one or more, you can very easily have a wizard that has high AC because they can have heavy armor and a shield, for example, and then just any one-handed weapon that you're just gonna wield for any stats or effects. This is mainly because in Baldur's Gate 3 there is no negative effect of wearing heavy armor and casting, unlike what many people are used to from, you know, older D&D games. So you can run around in heavy armor as long as you're proficient in it, to your heart's content, and then still nuke out fireballs and have a ton of AC. And that brings us to multiclassing. Now, it's important to note, you get your final subclass feat at level 10 so if you like that subclass feat that's when you definitely want to potentially go to level 10 level 12 is the least impactful except for the fact that there's a lot of good feats that you'd want so the easiest thing to do is multi-class one level into fighter so you can lock all weapons shields and armor some people also like going eldritch knight but that means you need to sacrifice three levels and that means that you do not get your level 10 feature. So if you don't care about your level 10 feature, then Eldritch Knight isn't a horrible way to go or one of the other fighter subclasses. But otherwise, even a one level dip in fighter can help a lot. Or because this class can benefit from so many different feats, I wouldn't blame you for just going pure wizard so you can get the three feats. Sacrificing four levels so you can still get to three feats in a multi-class is a little bit more questionable but i guess it just depends how much you care about the high level wizard spells all right guys so that brings us to the end of the wizard guide here hope you guys found it helpful if you did please make sure to drop a like let me know in the comments below thoughts and feedback greatly appreciate it subscribe to see more content from me as always thank you for your support and i'll see you guys in the next video